my name is Hedley Grantham. I'm from Conservation International, and I'm talking about uh, environmental economic accounting and protected areas, but drawing on a project called EVA, uh, which stands for Ecosystem Values Assessment and Accounting. It's a, uh, she's a very beautiful initiative that has the grand goal of trying to better understand nature's values and benefits and incorporate that into decision making. And it, the approach is generally uh, very much a, a policy evaluation approach followed by natural capital accounting and various decision support science tools to be able to get that information into decision making. Um, but I, I just wanted to start by uh, introducing uh, some work I did some time ago. This was to do an assessment of East Timor's protected area network. We looked at where the protected areas were, looked at what some of the biodiversity values were in terms of uh, ecosystems and species, and saw how, how well is the protected area uh, performing and what are the gaps. And don't get me wrong, this was a very important uh, assessment. This was the first time that East Timor's protected areas were actually mapped and understood what some of those values were. But I think where we're, we're heading and as, as we're hearing within this Congress is that what we really need is a more uh, holistic landscape accounting approach that we really want to understand what are those flows of benefits that come from protected areas, uh, both in, in, in different terms monetary or otherwise, and how do they flow to people and the economy. John introduced uh, the system of environmental economic accounts. Uh, this is the approach that we're taking. Uh, we're, we're currently trialling uh, this as part of EVA within Peru in, a, in a, a place called San Martin. And the way the system of environmental economic accounts works is it really takes the system of national accounts, which, which is represented here with the, the economy, and uh, it looks at what are the inputs and outputs uh, from the environment into the economy. Um, there's what's called the central framework, which is actually an international standard, and it looks at individual environmental assets, things like timber or fish or water. What are the stocks of these assets and how do they flow into the economy? Ecosystem accounting is also being proposed as part of this. It's not yet a statistical standard, very much in the experimental uh, phase, but rather than looking at individual assets, it's taking an ecosystem approach, looking at the ecosystem at the as, as the asset and looking at how, what's the condition, uh, what's the extent of these assets and how do, what sort of benefits flow to the economy. To give you an idea of what this sort of framework looks like on the ground, um, this is uh, San Martin in Peru. Um, the first thing we do is divide uh, Peru, this area in Peru, into what's called basic spatial units. And these uh, 100 metre grid cells, which are uh, uh, expanded to, to be able to be seen here. And for each one of those grid cells, what we want to do is we want to measure our ecosystems and our species within these, these uh, basic spatial units. And the framework that we're applying in San Martin in Peru is first of all looking at what's the extent and condition of these ecosystems, extent being the, the distribution of an ecosystem. Condition, we use a, a number of measures that try and get at different uh, measurements of condition, and that's based on using a reference level so we know how far or close we are to what would be in a, a good condition ecosystem. And we also look at what what's, what's called the expected future ecosystem flows. And what the difference is here is that some of those ecosystem flows, service flows, are not going to be done at a sustainable rate. So we try and do an estimate of what would be the sustainable harvest rate of, say, a provisioning service like timber, so we get a, a more realistic value of that ecosystem. For species, again, we look at the extent of, of uh, and condition of, of species, uh, just looking at what those special species are within, uh, within the region. And then we have a, a, a metric on uh, species diversity, and we're working with CSIRO using their uh, general dissimilarity modeling approach, which takes a really holistic approach to capturing what the uh, species richness and, and beta diversity is of the, of the region. We then want to summarize this into different ecosystem accounting units. 
So these ecosystem accounting units might be watersheds, if we want to summarise it by watershed. Uh, it could be a political unit, so like a, a, a political border. Um, and we're, we're also doing this uh, in terms of land tenure and management. So we can look at, say, our protected areas and understand how all those different values and measurements are within, say, the protected areas or the forestry concessions or agricultural areas. And then the idea is that we do this continually over time and start getting a good trend on, on some of these values. So at the moment, we're at the stage where we're busy frantically collecting all the data that's necessary for this and to organise it into that structure so that we can build the different ecosystem accounting elements. Uh, so we have things like uh, ecosystem maps for different uh, time, time periods, um, measurements like carbon, um, understanding uh, this is a measurement of the, the demand of, of water from the landscape for the rice fields. Um, and understanding what those different land tenure and management systems are, like different types of protected areas, um, concessions, etc. And so the output will be a series of, of spatial maps, uh, which are really important, um, both for the accounting purposes, but also for other purposes. Um, for management, etc. Um, but also we build a series of tables that capture all that information in a very systematic way. So for example, this, this table will be uh, a series of, of our ecosystem accounting units, let's say our protected areas, our, our forestry concessions, etc. A measurement of our ecosystem assets. And this one's looking at what those flows of, of monetary and physical values are from those ecosystem services. And then there's another table that then looks at well, who's benefiting from those so that we can understand where those flows of benefits are going into the economy. So what's the benefit of this approach for protected areas? Well, I think key to this is really recognising that ecosystems and species are, are assets. They have many different values and we recognise those multiple values. It really helps us to start understand sustainability, how are different sectors uh, using our natural capital, uh, where, where can we promote green growth It's going to be more sustainable and lead to overall more benefits for society? This, this is something that I, I increasingly recognise is that working with statisticians is very important because it really helps us to, uh, to, to systematise data, to organise data in a, in a particular way. And we, we're then li linking this with many different types of analytical uses. So, for example, looking at uh, different scenarios of landscape understanding what are the cost benefits of those uh, scenarios, uh, which uh, sort of future does this landscape want to be in, in terms of sustainability and other types of objectives.